In this video, I'm going to walk you through how we create a patterned ground plane. So far, we've been using a solid plane. If you want to have a region where there's no return plane, as we do in our board one project, I'm going to show you how we can shape that. And I'm going to do it in a really, really simple way, starting from the very beginning. Here's a, an initial screen. I don't have any projects open. I am just going to create a uh, layout page. So we go to File, we go to New, and I'm just going to create PCB. Now normally, you're going to have a project. You're going to have a good name for your project. You're going to have the schematic in it. And then you're going to have a PCB doc in that project. After you create your schematic and, it's, and you go through ERC check, you're going to validate that schematic and you're going to push that to the PCB. This is where it's going to go. And so here is the starting place. And of course, if we zoom out, here is the starting board. You'll notice the origin is way down here. We really want to have it over here at the lower left corner of the board. But before we move it there, we want to change the grid. The default comes up as a 5 mil grid. Perfectly fine for routing traces on the board. Most of the components are going to have pad pitches on the order of either 20 mils or 25 or 50 mils or even 100 mils. And so a 5 mil grid is a kind of the lowest common denominator in order to do all the routing. But when we're shaping the size of the board, we're going to use a coarser grid. To change that, we push G. It brings up the options. We're going to choose 100 mils, convenient size. Now we're going to move the origin. And how do we move the origin? Under Edit. And why did they put it under Edit? I have no idea. But under Edit, we see Origin Set. And so we're going to set the origin lower left corner. And now we're done. The next thing we're going to do is change the board size. Now this is the board. And remember, we have three different views. View 1, 2, 3. If we push the 1 button, that gets to 1 view. 2 gets the 2D, and 3 gets the 3D. It's the 1 layer that we want to look at. So we push the number 1. And this allows us to shape the board size and outline. When it, when it comes up in 1, this is literally the board. If we click on the inside anywhere, we've highlighted it. That's our focus. And now we literally can change the shape of the board. And remember what the maximum dimensions of the board have to be. If it's more than about 3.9 inches on a side, and we go to fab that, we're going to pay a lot more for that slightly larger board. We want to keep it at 3.9 as the absolute max. So I come over here to the edge. And if you notice, as I move the board edge, we see its dimension up here in the upper left corner. I want to move that so that it is 3.9 inches max. If you can fit it and you want to use a smaller dimension, great. You can do that. But we want to make sure it's less than 3.9. And the top height, there we go. So now the dimensions of our board, we look at the upper left corner here, 3.9 by 3.9. We're done. The next step is we want to add an outline layer to that board. So we're done forming the shape of the board. Now we're going to do things to the inside. And so we're going to go to the number 2 to view the two layer properties of the board. And in this board, we want to add an outline. And that is really simple. And again, why they place it under design, I'm not sure. I would have put it under place if we want to place an outline, but it's under design. So we get a design, and now under board shape, we're going to deal with a primitive. A primitive is another shape related to the board. So we're going to say, OK, here's the primitive. And we want the width of 20 mils as the uh, boundary of the keep out layer. And look, here it is. It's the keep out layer as default, because this is a really common operation we're going to do. We're going to keep everything unchecked, and we're going to say, OK, we're done. We've got our keep out layer, really important layer to include in the Gerbers, tells the fab shop where to cut the board. And now comes the last step. We're going to add on layer two, the bottom layer, we're going to add our ground plane. And it is really simple. First step, make sure our focus is the bottom layer, because that's the layer in which we're going to write the copper pour. And to do that, it's literally going to be, we're going to place a copper pour, a polygon pour. I'm going to show you 
two ways that we can place a shaped copper pour. The first is the simplest way. We literally can go to place, copper pour, and now we can draw the shape of the copper pour. Now normally we've said, okay, you just fill the whole board with copper pour. That's what we did before, and you end up with, and of course when you're finished, you do escape and escape, and you're done, and there's your copper pour. That's what we did before. And of course the last step is, and, and of course if this is your board, you would double click it, opens up the property page, and you want to assign it to the ground net. Now of course I don't have a schematic associated with this, so I don't have any nets that I've already labeled, but if this is your board and it's part of your schematic page, you've pushed to it, then you have nets associated with it and you can assign the ground to the ground net. This is what we've done in the past. If you've done it this way, then you can still add a cutout. We want to remove the copper pore in this region. And so we highlight it and we go to place and now we want to add a polygon pore cutout. We highlight that, we've got the cursor, and now we just draw the region in which we want to have the cutout. And so I'm just going to arbitrarily make the region over here, and we'll come over to here, up to here, and here. Escape and escape, and there it is. And we can reshape it once we've got it here. And I'll move it up to the top there. And if you need to change the dimension, you can move it around. And so there's our cutout. And now we've got our shaped copper plane. Once we've drawn our shaped copper by removing that cutout in the copper, if we ever want to come back and change it, it's pretty straightforward. We just have to highlight it. And the way we do that is we click off to the side, we drag, we highlight. And you notice anything we touched is highlighted. We want to deselect those. So we hold down the shift key and we click in the region that we want to deselect. We still have the two edges of the boundary. So we again, we're going to uh, we're going to zoom in so we can see it. Shift and click. That deselects it. We're going to go up to the top and do the same thing. We're going to um, shift and click. That deselects it. And now we've only selected the cutout. And now we can come in and we can move that and change its dimensions as well. That's one way of generating the cutout. This is how we generate the shaped copper pour if we started with a solid copper pour and we want to kind of retrofit. And of course we can make that shaped copper pour region anywhere inside the board. Now I'm going to show you an even simpler way of doing it if we start it from scratch. So let's get rid of our copper layer. We highlight it, we just delete. We've got the boundary over here. And so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to zoom in. I'm going to deselect the boundary, I'm going to deselect the boundary, and now I've only got our shaped cutout region selected, I'm going to delete it. This is our empty board. If we started with the bare board and we say, okay, we're going to add our ground plane on layer two, but we want it to start out shaped, it's really simple. Again, it's going to be place copper pour or polygon pour, and now we draw the vertices for it. Now what we did before was we just drew every four vertices, but now we want to draw it shaped if we know we want to start that way. So we start from the upper corner, we go to the bottom corner, and this is where using a 100 mil grid makes it so much easier. And now instead of going to the top and across like we did before, hey, let's make this region over here our cutout region. And let's see, we'll come over here and here. And now we've built a closed polygon. We do escape, escape, and we're done. And now, of course, we can shape that polygon. We have a connection to the vertices. So let's move this over here. Yeah, now we've got a nice square region. And of course, we can move these vertices anywhere we want in order to arrive at the final shape. And in one step, we've now created that shaped polygon pour region. And again, we do the same thing. We double click it, opens up the property page, and this is where we would assign the net as, as the ground net, based on having the schematic in this region. And now, this is the shape of the return on layer two, 
and we're ready to um, move all the components over from the schematic into our room, place them on the board, and do all the routing. And that's how we can generate a shaped polygon pore on the bottom layer and remove the ground plane where we don't want it in order to demonstrate the impact of good routing when we have a nice solid return and bad routing when we don't have that nice solid return.